Welcome! Hopefully you can hear me and see me. Why is... Why am I looking down? Hold on a minute. I'm a bit, be I'm a bit behind to... That's better. I'm in frame now. I'm a bit behind... Everything. I've seen, hear me... I've changed some settings in the stream so it might all be completely bad tonight. I'm not sure. Alright, Andrew, evening! Kangamoo. Excellent stuff. Uh, tell us about the exhibition. All in good time, Peter. All in good time. Hello again, David. Uh, right, a few folk watching, which is good. Um, please do let, let me know if the stream kind of misbehaves, because I... Uh, I think I've reduced the quality a little bit to save my computer sounding like it's going to explode even though that's what it sounded like as soon as I pressed stream which uh, wasn't helpful and it's all already it's a bit patchy on the uh, on the uh, readout of stream health so anyways yes t welcome to today today's episode of Tuesday night edits and today I've actually left the house and I've actually shot some new data. Um, so I had the afternoon out, or late morning and afternoon out, with uh, our good friend David Byrne, who should be, uh, who is in chat actually today. Um, <laughs> no worries, Paul. You get your priorities right. Why are you even looking in? Um, so yeah, been out shooting today, first time in six weeks, um, because I've been busy with something called an exhibition. Um, so yeah, new data. An old location, but new data. So we've got something to play with tonight. And so we're going to take you through the entire usual process from assessing an image right the way through to finishing one. Because I haven't looked through my data yet. I've loaded it into Lightroom and let Lightroom kind of sort itself out so we can actually view it in a, in a timely manner. And then... Uh, so then I will pick some images to work from and go from there. So yeah, um, so really there's not much more to say apart from if you're in Northumberland, come and see my exhibition at the Old School Gallery in Alamouth. It is underway, is what I should say. So yeah, I think there's been a lot of people looking at it. Um, yet to hear the tinkle of the cash register being uh, forwarded to me. But you know, it's early days, it's on for another five weeks. No panic yet. Yet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, right, let's just crack on, because time is short and this might take a while. So let us uh, get in the Lightroom. So this is all today's data. All 325 images. So might as well start looking through these. Like I say, I haven't looked at any of these yet today. All I did was load them in Lightroom ready. Um, that one was obviously out of focus. Um, okay, and I'll do my usual thing of uh, just giving everything a star. Well, anything that I think is going to be useful. A star rating of one. Um, yeah, just. And then I can go back through and pick out the one I want to work on. So, yeah, we went to uh, Harbottle Castle, which is up in the hills. Um, a very bright sunny day, very warm. You can probably see the sweat dripping off us still. It is bloody warm. Uh, and it's uh, pretty unpleasant, to be honest, even at this time of night. Evening, anyway. So uh, I was red hot up there, absolutely melting. Um, had to put a cap on, keep the old bonds uh, from being burnt in the sunshine. So, some of this data might be useful, some of it might not be. Um, just looking at some of these. You like one like this, it's a bit washed out. I like to have a bit of a bit of something. Um, you know, even like this one has a bit of a bit of something on the left there. Uh, some are just a bit too washed out. Um, I don't like, I'm not keen on these ones where it's almost like double lines 
you'll see you know, the actual line there and then it's been slightly doubled don't really like them so okay try to avoid those because I remember it being out of focus when I shot it David because I hadn't actually focused I think to be honest I might even press the button press the shutter by mistake because I was too busy talking to you uh, so yeah all right okay let's maybe go a bit of something this one because there's a nice the old remnants of the curtain wall here of the Bailey uh, it looks like there might be a nice texture in amongst that so you can keep that one it washed out again this one's about half do I don't I the one after it is a no just too much detail uh, hasn't really worked uh, and you get really random ones like this not really into that um, this one you know there's some nice lines in amongst here which is probably worth keeping as an option um, not really on that one this these ones like this one is probably better than that one it's because you've got this this extension of this ruined shard of of masonry there um, and just worth moving the camera it's made a funny shape up there not really attractive so we'll ignore that um, so far I'm not look I'm not too hopeful um, it was very very bright today so not ideal that one's all right nice bit of few lines here still got the shape of the uh, that ruined part there it's quite nice quite like that but yeah it was very bright so that does affect the image you know like the potential of how to capture the stuff that looks quite nice up there obviously you can kind of just dis discard all this on the left hand side um, Straight horizons are overrated, unless you're meant to be shooting them with straight horizons. Don't get me started on that. Well, I'm not getting me started on I just had a chuckle at somebody that had a good rant about that the other day. Very, very funny. Um, you will notice I go back and forward a few times, just so I'm, I'm almost mentally combining images. Uh, to start with, I think it's probably that one. Yeah. Um, yes. No, the, the, you know these ones are where the shapes start getting way out of control. Because I am trying to still retain an element of not realism, but you know recognizable shape when you got when you get shapes like this it's just not really what I'm after but you can kind of use you can use this as a primary kind of kind of spot uh, one bit of structure to it go for that one might work well with the one a previous one I picked out That one's really nice. This one's really nice. You got the uh, bit of detail in the ruins of the curtain wall, and you just got some nice lines in there. Um, was that down? Hi, Craig. Morning. No, you're not. You're not in either. You'd, well, you may be on the far far west of the uh, of the US. We might be in Australia, or down that way. Uh, rarely, Craig. The odd occasion. Um, just shoot the like, use the one one image. It's, it's it's a while since I did that, but very very yeah. It, it I can you can't do it, but I like making things more complicated by adding them, like combining more images. Um, 
I have in the in 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 the odd occasion had a, like a a stack of five and then whittled it down to where there was only one left and just processed that one uh, because it wasn't really working out. Uh, this one's quite nice, and this one, would you believe, I think might work well with the previous shot. Um, you just got a nice block of colour along here. You nearly dis disregard this, but you can see this lines continues up into the sky. That might work in quite well with something, so I'm going to choose that. Obviously, you might. I'll probably not edit this one tonight, but um, certainly for a few for future um, editing, pick it out for that. Now this one I remember when I was actually shooting it that these started looking quite good was that this line down here you know you can start using not really as a leading well it, I suppose it is a leading line line but it you know almost looks like half the half the mound of the of the old castle like it's a Mott and Bailey castle so you know half the mott's gone so like using this and combine it with um, similar images might work really well. West coast of the US, I thought it was a bit, uh, a bit late to be morning and anywhere else. Evening Alan, how are you doing? Uh, so, and again these ones are all quite similar. Got the nice heavy shapes on the right hand side. The computer's going mad. So these, you know, there's a good. This is a good run of four in a row that I can see something in, and I was actually thinking that at the time when I was shooting it. Sometimes you do, you do just get a feel of of it uh, working well. You just got to carry on and make as many copying, trying to copy yourself as much as you can um, when you get that when you get that feel of a, of an image. Uh, so you've got, just got more options. That one doesn't look so good. Uh, I'll keep that one. Sometimes I do like the odd random shape on the other side of the image just to balance it out. Uh, yeah, it's using it randomised again. That one's good for a bit of detail. You can kind of see what's going on. A bit light. Uh, this one could be quite odd because you've got almost like that floating part that I could use in an, in an image quite effectively. We've got a few watching again the night. Nice viewing figures. Thank you all very much for coming along. If you do enjoy the, the stream by the way please do leave a thumbs up and all that kind of stuff. Subscribe if you haven't. Click the bell icons. Um, all the usual things we ask you to do as YouTubers. These ones are a bit poor. Uh, you could maybe get something quite, really quite abstract out of this one. So I will pick this one. Just on the off, off chance I could get something from it. Just scroll back. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there was a brief time where the kind of the sun went in, and obviously with no light being cast, well, not direct light being cast onto the uh, onto the mot and the ruins, kind of made things a bit more complicated. And you can see how much duller it was. So that's probably why I've really quite liked getting back in, getting into shooting in direct light, in in bright direct light. Obviously, it's if it's more subtle in the evenings or early mornings, it's easier to work with. Uh, this was pretty much midday, not long after midday, middle of the summer, sun beating down. So, as unlandscape photography type of light that you want to shoot in as possible, uh, you couldn't get further away from what most people are looking for. That one looks quite nice. Uh, probably use something like that as a bit of detail. Uh, slightly washed, like a bit more side to side kind of movement in this one. Uh, another one like.
like that, it's pretty similar. Completely missed. Uh, so th this is why I usually save you from looking through these images because it takes quite a while just to just even go through. I'm not even halfway through yet. Uh, just takes a takes a bit of time. That one looks quite nice, even though it's quite abstracty. Um, that one, that one, that one. I think those three combined could be quite nice. Uh, moved location ever so slightly on this one. Got a bit more up up against the curtain wall, but still using the that ruined shard of stone to uh, you know, the keep just as the as the main focal point. Um, must admit, when I was shooting it, I wasn't paying any attention to the clouds in the background, which compositionally don't look too good. Evening, Paul. How are you, sir? Um, again, clouds went in. Subject got, subject matter got quite dark. Didn't be, you know, makes it. The results weren't quite as good out of them. Um, again, change some zoom levels just to see what were what variation we could get. Uh, some of these ones aren't really working out that well. Maybe it's being really close up to the subject meant that you were really, really getting lots and lots of detail in that initial capture. Just not moving the camera fast enough. Uh, that one looks all right. And I also I did do some vlogging today whilst we were there because I haven't got much recorded for future videos. Um, and then towards the end, I ran out of memory of card space, so I have still yet to record the outro. Most annoying. I need another. SD card. Uh, that one looks quite good. Nice bit of shape in here. So, like the, these ones aren't been quite as successful. I think. I think you do get kind of runs where you get four or five in a row, which work, and then you get a lot of a lot of crap afterwards. So let us you get really nice, you know, really nice stuff like this. Just a random, random throw. And the, this this one, I actually did a piece of camera, um, kind of demonstrating how I flick the camera completely upside down. Um, also, the same technique technique which made me drop the camera a few weeks ago. Um, and obviously as I, as I was doing that other settings of on the camera kept on changing so that's why some of them are dark and some of them are lighter um, that one's quite nice but you'll see all that in the future if I decide to re release the video and then we change location but that will just, because this is go going on far too long we will just go, we'll just uh, concentrate on the Harbottle images we did go to another ruined castle which is on private land, so um, we'll, we'll save that one for another day. Maybe it's even next week. Right then, so we will uh, select all the ones I've marked. So effectively that's what I do after each shoot. Generally I don't do it immediately after. I will... I'll have a look. I'll have an initial look through just to make sure I'm not completely gutted by having rubbish Im images. But I will go through, you know, maybe a couple of days later and pick out the ones that I want to work on and then sit on them again for a little bit longer. That's usually the way I work. Alright, so this is almost like a second, not a second cull, but a second look through and just for today's efforts, kind of look at what we're going to work on today. Um, nearly tempted by that. 
what we'll see. I did get to that good data at some stage, didn't I? Which I quite liked. Is it them ones? It may well have been them ones. Yeah, I think it is. So these middle few, which I think worked quite well. So let's work on these ones. So that's, and I'll, so I can pick them out, I'll just give them a two star rating. Uh, yeah. And I will actually use that one because I might use in this bottom corner just to balance it out a bit. So yeah, and then we changed location, I think. So it is going to be quite a, I was going to say it's going to be quite an, an abstract image. It's going to be quite a washed out one. There's not a lot of detail here. See, there's not much detail in this, you know, the what, the ruins of the curtain wall. And this other block over here. There's not going to be much of that. It's going to be, it is going to be quite ethereal and a bit washed out. Uh, so, I'll maybe see, I might include, I'll include this one as well, I suppose. Just in case I want, do want to add in just a little bit of a little bit, little bit, little bit of something, a bit of texture. So to edit these, I will just select them all so I know where we are. Develop module, and I'm going to sort out the lens corrections. So get rid of the vignette and sort sorts all that. All that gubbins out. Um, detail, I'm going to increase the noise reduction to 50 just to get rid of the ISO noise that is there. Um, white balance, try auto, that's kind of made it a bit bluer. This movie's not ideal. Cloudy as shot. Cloudy and out as shot's pretty similar. So I think we will just look at some main changes or main slider adjustments on uh, on the image as a whole. I was gonna, yeah, I am going ethereal, so I'm just nudging the exposure up a tiny bit. Um, Pull down the blacks just to give us a little bit more in this area. There's some nice marks in here. Uh, I'm not too fussed about retaining any of that. Um, I'm, I'm not entirely sure where this is. This image is actually going to. I'm going to pull out the, uh, the shadows just to kind of lighten this this tree. Um, it's not that far about there, just so it doesn't. You know, the darkness of the tree doesn't uh, hamper the image. Uh, so how's that looking? Not bad. The only thing is we need to do something about the colour. The colour is very, you know, that's almost a, that's a virulent kind of green, greeny yellow, isn't it? So that needs to change. And you know me, I like a, I like a warmer tone. I like a, an orange and a red. So I'm going to pull all that back. Um, saturation, I'm going to drop the saturation of the blue up in that corner. And a little bit further inside as well, down here. Just so it's not too bad. Oh gosh, that's maybe it's a bit far. It's not going that far around it. Um, let's try luminance in here. Yeah, I'm just going to pull that back a little bit. Right there, you. I will probably make this quite red in Photoshop. We'll see where we see where we end up getting to. So, uh, yeah. Right, I think we will. Uh, I like dust spotting. We need to do the dust spotting because there's a few there. Had to shoot the F11 because it was so bright. These are all shot at half a second, I think it was. So, very bright, had to move very quickly. Ideally, it would have been, you, know, you would go up there, or maybe it's about this time of night, where 
the sun's not quite as strong. That's a dust spot there as well. Uh, just to, and then you get a little bit more, a little bit less intensity of the light, slightly warmer, easier to work with. Right, that's the dust spot and done, and then we'll just sink, sink all those settings across. And weird. Hi, Doug. Uh, all going well, I think, Doug. I haven't, had, like I was saying earlier, I haven't had the, the tingle of the text message saying I've sold something, so uh, we'll just, I've got all the patience in the world. I am a patient fella. Uh, so there's no, you know, there's no hurry, it's on for a good few weeks yet. Right then, uh, let's open these lures in Photoshop, which is the norm for me. Yeah, but mine's only got 12 megapixels to clean up, David. So mine probably doesn't show up as bad. <laughs> Although I don't actually go much higher than f11 to start with, so... If I went up to f22, I would be on all day. Cleaning the sensor. So, my god, it's warm! Boiling in here! Doesn't help with the lights on as well. Let's shift to Photoshop view. There we go. Now we get a full screen. Come on. There we go. Right, all six images now lined up in Photoshop. And let us now start combining. So you, you just select them all and then start looking at blend modes and straight away I can see a dust spot I've missed. There, that little beastie there, I can see him. You can see him, work, you can see him more there. I think, I think I usually, I miss that one quite a lot. Anyways, just going through the blend modes to see what's on offer at the minute. Whilst my computer explodes, my god, will you be quiet? It is a very, very noisy. Ooh, moody. Uh, right, I think it's gonna be... Let's try dark and let's take out that detailed layer. That's the one. Take him out. And then start rearranging a bit. So let's just knock all these layers off. Like there's that one where there's the block on the left hand side. I'm gonna retain him. Retain this one because it's a really nice uh, uh, got a really nice shape there. Do I wanna line that up or not? No. Maybe it's not. Let's just keep that where it is, bring in this one, and then line him up with that top layer. Roughly. As close as I can. And then this one, where's he been? You're going to get him... I might change my mind here because this isn't, doesn't look like it's working at the minute. Uh, let us move him over there. And that's just a dog's dinner. <laughs> right then, let's uh, undo some of these. That them all. Yeah, that's them all. Right, let's take that one away. Take that one away. Take that one away. Take that one away. That's the one that's going to have to move. So let's put that one to there. Then move the top layer into about there. I really like this mark here. That's kind of what I want to, you know, put build the image around really. And uh, if I bring that one in, that's the wrong one. Actually, we can, no, I don't want to delete it just in case I want to bring anything else in. This one. I really like 
this bottom corner just to balance things out a bit but it's causing issues so I'm just gonna get, get a um, do a gradient filter and I'm gonna do it the right way around this time do it that way and immediately you can see that mark come back Better. Right, yeah, that's a bit more. It's a bit more like it. Um, and here, I'm just going to mask that off because I can see that edge there. There we go, that's him blended out. Okay. And this one, I'm going to see where he hasn't really got an edge, has he? This one I actually put on the top and I'm going to go to multiply with that one. You can see it's just starting to build in it like a ghostly kind of uh, look about it. Put the tower on. I call it a tower, it's not really a tower at all, it's just a piece of masonry. But from a, you know, when you get painterly like this it kind of looks like a tower. Um, so I'm going to reduce the opacity on that to about 50-ish. There we go. Right, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, that one. This next one. This one. Is probably a problem. Not going to do much there, is it? It's not really doing anything. This one. What I would like is if it kind of gave the um, that bit of masonry a little bit of structure, which it kind of is there. So let us mask some of this out. But instead of like it's just a line gradient mask, let us try a circular. Circular radial gradient, not a circular gradient. Let us drag that across there. There we are. That's just retained that central bit there, so you can just get the hint of it. It's all about hint, hints and smudges. Yeah, it's a bit early for the heather yet, Alan. Yeah, I was going to say you can probably hear my fan at the minute. It's bloody gun mental. Uh, right, I'm just going to take that one off. Debating, do I take that away or leave it? Hmm. Hmm. Actually, I think that'll that'll be fine. That'll be fine. Um. Right, adjustment layer on the top. Gonna go for I don't like a bit of an S curve. Something like that. So how does that affect it? I think there's a bit of a bloom around of the of the images there. Uh, let's reduce the opacity slightly. It's maybe fifteen percent. And I'm actually going to mask out this bottom corner because it's affecting it quite badly. Or is it? No, it's actually not. I thought it was. Sorry. Ignore me. Random thoughts, as usual, unfiltered. Just like our new Prime Minister, the big Wazak. Uh, right, let us draw. See, there's an edge, an end there. Fine. Which one is? Which one's giving us the line at the bottom? That one. That one needs a thingy filter. Right way around. There we go. Got rid of that line now. Very subtle. You can barely see it. Uh, and I'm just going to crop to that bottom bit there. There you go. Cropped there. 
And right, so that's, I think it's pretty much my base image. It's a bit yellow, but we're gonna, we're just gonna try to warm that up a little bit now. So the new layer, I'm gonna drop in some color. Some orange, because I always drop in orange. Uh, let us uh, paint bucket tool, just on that full layer. And then the uh, yeah, hue blend mode or color, or maybe something else. Soft light looked interesting, but very yellowish. Um, Multiply, that's very dark. If I reduce the opacity. Bloody hell, my computer. I'm going to need a new computer soon. I can, I can see. Uh, right, let's just stick with hue and be done with it. Reduce the opacity on the hue blend mode to a point that I am happy with. It's going to be about. It's going to be about seventy-ish, about seventy percent. Gauging on that, something like that. Yeah, a bit orange. I may come out again and come out of it again and just go through. You know, just alter that base image again. Uh, yeah, I think I'll. I'll That'll do as a starting point. So let us. Me select the tools gone missing, so I'll just crush all that down into one layer. Filter, come here. Um, Analog Effects Pro 2, that's what we use. Hi, subvids. Welcome to the stream. And now we wait for the computer to catch up again. Come on, machine. Right, and now we're now we're targeting. So got the usual presets on the left, which I will have a quick skirt through just to see what options we have. Ooh, that one looked quite interesting. Very minimal. Thing is, they always look quite good on the just a small little preview on the left. And when you actually apply it to the main image, it can look terrible. That one's another option, I think. There's a few that might might work yet. We might even get a second version as well. Yeah, right, that's the quick look through. It was dark poppies, wasn't it? I think it was the one. Let's have a just quick look at that one. Big interesting tones. Um I must admit the last time I shot this scene as well it was pretty um it was pretty washed out not washed out didn't have a lot of structure to it again like that main piece of masonry kind of got like washed out a bit i had to do some very much it took us a good few edits before i got an image i was happy with right so let's maneuver some of this double exposure around to Hopefully bring in some structure. So when you you know you when you're overlaying kind of a subtle kind of layer on top of another subtle kind of layer, you don't get a lot to play with. So you've got to be really quite open to interpretation. And this one's looking very much like a Manchester shot I made a good few weeks ago now. Um, let's knock the exposure back a little bit. That's better. Don't 
For the untrained eye, this just looks like a yellow smudge, and you would be right. Uh, yeah, it's too hot, Dave, isn't it? For my it was warm enough last Tuesday for for my poor poor machine. Um, it was struggling. Uh, so there you go. Contrast, drop the contrast. Increase the contrast. Well, that's a bit more defined. That look better. Um, so, um, is it only landscapes I do this? Yes, I am a landscape photographer. So, I've only done. Well, that's seascapes as well. Uh, but that's been that's been pedantic. That. Uh, but yeah, I, I haven't done portraiture and whatever whatever else other types of photography there is. Um, I haven't done that, so I stick to landscapes, kind of rural, heritage kind of stuff, uh, is what I usually do. It's going to go too yellow, don't want it too yellow. Nah, let's forget about lens vignette. Um, film type. Yeah, film type, we need to change that to warm. There you go, slightly better. And up to there, yeah, that's better. Levels and curves, obviously, going to do a bit of work in here. This is where you can really alter colours. Uh, let's get a bit more. Actually, probably where it was was good. Um, blue. Not really trying to add in too much yellow. Uh, let's try red. Oh yeah, come with me. Come with me now. What's that song again? Uh, anyway, I'm wittering on as usual. Something like that. Yeah, kind of like that. Uh, don't know whether it's Fre French or just straight impressionist type of stuff, but obviously Turner influence to start with. But I, you know, I've, I've maybe started to think about the uh, your monies of the world obviously the, uh, the French were leading on that back in the day uh, let's pull that back over there increase a touch does that do anything for it not really so we have a we have an image. Is it any good? I don't know. Um, right. So there you go. There's one. Um, we will try again. Oh, that's good to hear. Uh, yeah, I mean, I was going to say that was I, I would class, you know, wildflower photography as landscape photography. Um, not the grandiose vista type of landscape photography, but intimate lands landscapes. Um, I have done flowers in the past, um, poppy fields and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Thank you, Peter. Uh, let's have an, let's let, let's not carry carried away. Let's have another go. Let's try a different one. Uh, bloody! It's going to take off that damn computer. It's spinning that hard. Right. So let's go for a second image. See, you know, like I said, I would take you from the start to the finish of the uh, process. This is what I sometimes what I'll do is I look down the, the presets on the left hand side. So down here. Actually, why is my base over on that side? It should be over. 
Should we over here for this? For this, uh, when using Analog Effects Pro 2. Sorry about that. So you completely missed out all my slider moving in the, on the previous image. Uh, so yeah, what I'll sometimes do is kind of get an image so far, save it, come out, and then go back in to edit it with like with another start and preset. So dark poppies we got. Use that one. There was another one I was kind of looking at that looked reasonable. Let's have a look at this one. Oop. Nah, too dark. Uh, he's all getting a bit bright and colourful. Don't like bright and colourful at the minute. So yeah, let's go back to the top. Where was it? There was one. There was another one I saw. Was it this one that we have had a quick look at before? So we expose them, let's manoeuvre this around to see if there's anything of note. There's a bit there. Let's turn this around. Find that central part. Come here. Almost that line which I liked before. If I can find that and bring it down so it makes that line down the centre. And sometimes when you're doing these you've just got to forget about because like here it's you know you you've got your rule of thirds, main subjects on your right hand third. Sometimes you just gotta forget about all that and actually think you know, almost pre visualise that you're gonna crop this to say a square when you're finished. Uh, yes I did a poppy one last week. Um yeah. Not my not me best. <laughs> I'll say that now. That's probably why I've given up on that series now. Uh, that's just, there's a lovely little mark there. I like a little mark. So this is why I'm kind of thinking you've got to disregard left, or this side, looking at, you looking at me at the screen. Um, disregard the right hand side and really just concentrate on this part. Obviously the, you know, that, that shard of masonry isn't really apparent there, which isn't great, but we can, uh, you know, there's a lot of definition lost. But we can do certain things to maybe help. So just reducing the exposure balance, kind of prior to prioritizing the original base image over the overlaid image which we've expanded and rotated you know get away from that um, I'm not sure this image is going to go anywhere I'll drop the hammer on and uh, need to increase the uh, contrast brightness do we bring that down do we increase it it's kind of yellow, doesn't it? Uh, let us drop that brightness. Drop that. No, that, that detail extraction needs to be right up because we want to get as much as we can out of there. We have got the tree on the right hand side, which kind of gives it a little bit. And so cropping on this one's going to be quite important because uh, you want to get rid of all this crap down here. Uh, yeah, double exposure. That's fine, and then film, film type, cool, needs to be warm, let's go faded, let's go strength up there, 
Keep it on fairly weak. Levels and curves is where we need to be looking. That's where a lot of the orange is coming from. So I'm just going to pull that back up again. Like this S curve, just ever so slightly. This way, things get really random. You did, Craig. You can get them through my website. There is a link below, or you can go direct to the uh, direct to the uh, purchase page. There's a link to that as well. Down underneath, underneath the uh, under the uh, yes. In the description, that's the word I was looking for. Jesus Christ, Andy. Heat stroke. I think that's what I've got today. Uh, so in that pack, there is 27 presets to choose from. All as easily controllable as in just moving sliders and curves around. So hopefully it'll be very useful to you. But the only work in Nick in in Analog Effects Pro 2 from the Nick collection though. So please do ensure that you do have it before ordering or before purchasing I should say. Oh this is just playing around with curves. Uh yeah, let's just cut <laughs> let's just stop this right now. Uh yeah. Let's just uh, yeah. Let's, let's just let's just abandon ship on this one. So we do have two images made. Yeah, actually, where well, I was going to look for presets art. There you go, Craig. If you go if you go to that link, it'll go direct to the purchase page. And if you and if you use the um, or just the link to my general website on the in the description below, we'll get you to a more descriptive page and a video on how to install them because people keep on asking. It's easy, easy. Right, next trick is sometimes I do is I'll actually come <laughs> just check to see how these these two finished versions um, might combine. I do sometimes do that. Just because you're never really sure and what will come out. Usually crap. Like this one. Yeah, let's forget that. But sometimes it does work, sometimes you get an even better image out of one of them. So we've got two to choose from really. That one is nothing. I think it's all about this version. This initial version. Much more pleasant. It's a bit lighter. It certainly kind of gives you more impression of the day. Like a very bright sunny day. Bit of a breeze. Clouds passing by. Very small clouds. Um, but just generally a really nice pleasant summer's day. Which I think this gives a feeling of. Hopefully. Hopefully you can see that in it. So uh, I will just save this out. Uh, just this top, just with the top version shown. And this will go back into Lightroom. Where we will play around with a crop or two. And then that'll be that, basically. So hi. Right. Anything else in chat going on that I should be... Paying attention to. Whilst this saves because it's so damn slow. Shit, I'll have time to type this address in there. Oops. That's the gun. Right, so that's saved. Excellent. Back to Lightroom now then. Lightroom. 
Okay, so uh, yeah, and then, you know, this stage, I'll give it a star rating of three, so I know which is finished, what images are finished, uh, and then I will give it a, get the crop tool out, and then start playing around with the crop. Obviously you got your 3b2 crop, with which what we started with, which to be honest is quite nice. Um, I probably will keep that version, but we will make a, create a, vir make a new virtual copy. And then we will crop from here. So let's try one by one crop. Um, I think it's quite nice to leave a little bit of this corner in. Um, I am not that convinced about that one. I quite like the diagonal lead in from this block down here up to the uh, you know, the top of the mot, the, the, the keep, even though there's nothing in the middle really to connect it. I think it just gives it a nice balance. So let's confirm that one. Yeah, let's try another one. So create another virtual copy. And then we will, uh, let's try a, a more, a, a more panoramic type one. So that uh, for some reason always goes that way. Hit X to turn it around. And then you can kind of crop this around, move it around, and just by chance it's kind of hitting right on the, you know, this piece of masonry is hitting right on the, right inside the, that top right hand third, which is nice, gives things a balance. You've got the tree in the background there, you know, the, the edge of the moth coming down here. Quite good. Not a bad little composition. Could maybe do with a little bit more in the bottom here. So let's go for a slightly deeper panoramic style. So another virtual copy, and this is this is basically what I do. I'll just make lots and lots of crops of the same image. So crop tool, and I like a nine by five crop because it's just a little bit deeper, and it's not sixteen. You know, it's not sixteen by nine TV style. Just like that, you can get that a little bit little bit more extra of uh, screen real, real estate so you can see the between the, the slightly deeper 9x5 and the 2x1 there just a little bit more just gives the, the image a little bit more room to breathe excellent stuff I'll be grand good to see what you shot David because uh, you were shooting a hell of a lot I know that rapid fire I could hear in the background. Uh, so yeah, I think I shot 300, was it 325 today I shot? So a quiet day. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm quite, quite happy with that. First image back after six weeks-ish. Um, first shot, in, you know, first image in anger, post exhibition. So I think I'm quite, quite happy with that. Let's have a shifty on the, uh, full screen so we can all have a decent look at it there we go move this cursor out the way i'm quite happy with that there's not a, i mean it's not it's not got a lot of detail i could maybe i could maybe uh, play around with the this new texture slider that we have to play around with in for uh, not in lightroom so where's that basic and then texture you've got you can add it. There is a, there's a nice little bit of extra texture there when you get to 100%. In here, there's a bit of, you know, a few nicer marks. You, maybe you're starting to see the spin of the camera there. And you can see you have rotated the camera, you can see the marks there. Um, but yeah, adding in a little bit of uh, a little bit of texture. 100% of texture makes quite the difference. So if we went halfway, that adds in a little bit. Yeah, that's I can see that. Um, it's one of them ones I'm still playing around with. I'm not always con convinced. Um, I think it, I think it works more on the subject matter. So like a radial filter with that texture slider in would be better. Let's have a a quick play with that. There we go. We just need a little bit, a little bit more there. Pull that more into the center texture lift that to 50% there you go and then that's just affecting that part of the image leaving everything else quite subtle there you go
I'm quite happy now. I'm quite happy. That's uh, a nice little image back. Why is that gone there? Get off. Go back to normal. Why is this image changed? There we go. Right. I thought I'd ruined my picture there. So yeah, that's quite good. Uh, quite happy with that. And so yeah, I think that'll do for an episode. Pretty much bang on an hour, which is what I always try to aim for. Thanks, Paul. Very kind of you. Um, so yeah, quite happy with that. Another episode down. Yeah, I've taken you from the very start. You know, like I didn't even, I, like I, I didn't even know what images I'd taken really. Uh, so we've gone through the picking process, which was sometimes that can be eye-opening to see what rubbish I actually take for for some people out there. That's always good to show, so you know, not everything's a winner. You do generally throw away probably 70% of the images you take. Or not throw away, but dis discard them for the for the time being. Uh, took you through that and then built built the image up with six layers, I think we used. Uh, or five layers, but we discarded the sixth layer. That was re deemed too detailed. And then into, for, into Analog Effects Pro and did my usual stuff using presets and stuff, which you can buy from the link below if you're interested. So, I think that'll, uh, that'll do. Thank you very much for watching tonight. Um, do leave a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed. Leave a comment if you're watching after the course. Um, if you watched live, come back in 10 minutes and leave a comment once the video is rendered and you can access the comments area which will be good. Thank you very much for being in chat, as always. Uh, it's always way better to have people here keeping an eye, uh, feeding, giving me feedback, and letting me, know, letting me know that the mic works, that the camera's working, and all that kind of stuff. Excellent, thank you very much, Laura. That's very kind of you. Uh, yeah, I thought it, was, I thought it was about time I showed the entire process. So yeah, um, yeah, I was gonna say, let's vlog, let's vlog our goats. If you want to learn direct from me, you can actually uh, come on one to ones with us, uh, with you know a good work, a practical time, and a lot more in depth stuff on the uh, post processing. So if you're interested in that, check my website out. Uh, link is below. I think there'll be probably a link direct to the uh, one to one tuition, actually in the in in the description. So do check that out if you are interested. And for anybody that's left watching, um. Are any of you interested in a calendar for 2020? I am considering making a calendar because everybody else bloody does. Uh, so do, do give us some feedback on that. Um, I may ask in a community post type of thing that you can do on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, yeah, might as well try and make a little, a few pennies. And Peter, if you're still watching, I will get back to you shortly. So yeah, right. I'm wittering on far too much. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Keep hard. See ya.